Okay guys, so this is the video on reaction rates. This is the first time that usually uh, students will get kind of nervous about kinetics. And that is just because of the vast number of equations. And so I want to pull out uh, this for a second. This is the equation sheet. It is available already on Blackboard. Um, it's a good idea to go ahead and get comfortable with it as uh, you know then you're not trying to figure out where things are. Now I will tell you I may update this a little bit just because of printability uh, but it's going to be the same thing and you can tell I labeled it kinetics um, so even if I end up moving it uh, around this box should look essentially the same and so as we go into this unit occasionally I'm going to hit pause and come back to this um, set of equations. Okay. Okay, so as we talk about kinetics, we began with the reaction rates. We began with uh, talking about those factors that influence reaction rates. Now we're going to get into what the numeric meaning of that is. And the way we do that is we're going to come up with a rate constant, uh, the rate equation, and the reaction order really using experimental data. Now this is um, something that is kind of fun uh, if you allow it to be. But just kind of keep in mind that as we work through this it is really truly mathematical okay we're gonna then move into the integrated rate laws and again we're not gonna do the integration itself we're just going to use the equations that are given to us okay there it is so as we focus on this video this is where we are for the moment we are on rate laws integrated rate laws and determining the half life of a reaction from those rate laws now there are two types of rate laws. There's the differential rate law, which we really just call rate law. We don't say differential rate law, it's just rate law. Um, chemists are lazy, right? So we shorten that. This is going to relate concentration to the reaction rate. Now that is the simplest one to use and it works for almost uh, a good, well it works for a good portion. But the more useful is the integrated rate law. Here we are going going to relate not only uh, the concentrations initially and at some time, but we're going to relate uh, the rate constant and really kind of work at how much is left at certain periods of time. Okay, so differential is where we're going to begin. We'll move into the integrated. So rate laws are just mathematical expressions. They're equations that you are given. I mean, this sheet here is truly, I'm going to actually try to put this as a hint on your exam so that even if you forget to ask for the handout, it's already embedded. I'll let you know how that goes as I work on that this week. Um, but it is going to be available for you. And so the differential rate law are these ones at the top, rate equals k, rate equals ka, rate equals ka squared. Okay, now, oh, I did that. Okay, so there it goes. Here we're going to have rate is equal to some constant. That is a lowercase k. Guys, I cannot stress to you enough. If you enter a capital K, it will be wrong. You need a lowercase k here. And it's going to be equal to the concentrations of your reactants. All of them are going to be raised to some exponent. So M, N, and P are just integers. We are not going to deal with fractions or decimals here. You are going to have whole numbers only. Um, and these integers, these exponents, must be determined from experimental data. You can't get it from the balanced equation whatsoever. Now, the overall order of a reaction is the sum of all your exponents. So it's just going to be, for us, N, plus, well, M plus N plus P, okay? 
the products don't appear in the rate law because we are considering the initial reaction where there is no product. And we typically for this unit consider our reactions to be irreversible. So first order rate laws, uh, we always start with this um, one because, you know, I don't know. First order rate laws depend on the concentration of only one reactant. That reactant is going to be first order. It's going to be raised to an exponent of one. We do not write the one that is understood here. Uh, again, chemists are lazy. So we talked about the reaction rate. The rate is equal to the change in that reactant per unit time. This should probably be a negative here. Um, and it's going to be equal to the constant times uh, the molarity of that reactant raised to the first power. Now, the other reactants, there could be more than one reactant present. It's just that they're not going to influence the rate at all, okay? And so for that matter, uh, we only care about uh, the one that is influencing it, okay? So the overall rate law here is rate is equal to K. Second order rate laws um, have a couple more possibilities. Oh, by the way, because we know that the rate is a change in concentration per time, or rate is it got the units molarity per second, this has got units of molarity, so our K must be one over seconds, okay? Second order rate laws have a couple of possibilities. You could have a rate law that is second order with respect to one reactant or you could have a rate that is dependent on two reactants where each one of them has an exponent of one power where it's first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B, and second order overall. Okay. Now the idea is primarily this is the one that we are going to be focusing on here but if we're calculating the overall rate law, excuse me, the overall order of reaction, this is a possibility as well. Now, again, the rate is always considered to be some change in concentration per time. So if rate is equal, got the units of molarity per time, here molarity per second, it could be molarity per hour, who knows, um, K and then This has got molarity squared. So because of that, um, we have to get rid of one of these molarities as well as uh, have a time. So this has not only got units of one over second, it also has to cancel that uh, and get have a molarity per second. So our units for the rate is molarity per time, K is molarity per time, and um, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a issue here. Stop that. Okay, for some reason it won't let me correct this, but it should be, um, I know I moved it over in the other place, but your K has to be because rate is molarity per time and this A is going to be molarity but it's going to be squared. The only way to cancel one of those is to have one over molarity time. So it's usually M to the negative one and S to the negative one or one over MS either way. Okay. Um, for some reason it's not letting me edit on this screen but I'll try to correct that and upload it. For zero order reaction, uh, this means that the concentration does not matter. It is going to have the same rate no matter what. And so because of that, your rate is just equal to the constant of that reaction. And so your K is going to have the same units um, as your uh, rate does. So it's going to be molarity per second here. 
Now, in terms of what that means for us, when we talk about uh, the overall equation sheet, oops, you can kind of see here we've got rate is equal to k, rate is equal to ka, rate is equal to ka squared. You can kind of infer here it, the units are molarity per second or molarity time. Um, this is going to be 1 over time and this is going to be 1 over molarity and time. And that's just to make sure that your rate ends up as the right units. This one. Now, in terms of what you're going to get on the overall uh, exam, you're going to get those equations that, that really um, will help you. But you're going to have to know how to find the exponents, how to figure out the order, and how to use those um, equations. Okay. And so when we're talking about figuring out what the exponents are, generally this is where you are going to get a table of data and you have to interpret that material. You actually do this in lab as well, which is interesting. Uh, we used to do true wet labs, but what we found is sometimes the chemicals decompose too fast and it doesn't always give you correlated data. Um, so for this semester we're doing you know, a dice, dry lab, that kind of thing. Uh, but it still works pretty well. And so really it's a matter of you get the table of the data and you have to compare both the rate at two different times and um, two different concentrations. Now because the rate law is rate is equal to k, a to the m, rate is equal to ka to the m, and we're looking for our m. When you look for everything being held constant except for this a concentration, you can actually simplify this quite a bit. And what's going to happen is by doing it this way, it allows us to solve for that m in general. So what we're going to try and do is find where uh, the concentration has doubled. Usually that's the easiest. And so if you double your concentration, this is going to be a ratio of 2 to the m, you can kind of compare what happens to the rate uh, change. And 2 to the m, what is the m going to be to make it equal to that change in rate. Uh, it ends up being kind of fun uh, because it's just a matter of math. Now you can actually do it in your calculator but for the most part we don't have to worry about that because it's going to be a, a nice easy ratio. Um, even in lab it usually works out to be pretty good. Now let me see if I can pull up my calculator here. Let's pause while I do that. Okay, it's not letting me pull this up, but that doesn't matter. I'll still show you how to solve for it um, as we get the rate change is equal to uh, this ratio raised to some m. Okay. And so um, it's going to be handy both for lab and for a uh, lecture. So here's what we're what I mean when I say you're going to get a table of data. Here we've got a reaction, a some amount of A reacting with some amount of B going to some amount of product. And so our rate law we know is going to be rate is equal to some constant times the concentration of A to some exponent and the concentration of B to some exponent. Now the way that we find this is we want to look, let's first focus on X. Okay. Now if we're working, looking at only the thing for A, we want to operate under trials where B is constant. And so we look for where the concentration of B is constant, 0 0.1 to 0 0.1, and A is changed. So here we have a change from 0.1 to 0 0.2. So if we look, we're going to compare the rate, uh, either way, 2 over rate 1, 
is equal to the concentration of A2 over A1, and then you have your constant, which cancels, raised to the m. Now, what we have here so far is the rate goes from 8 to the negative 2 to 3.2 to the negative 1. So it goes up by a factor of 4. This goes from 8 to 32. Well, I'll go ahead and write it out. So this is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 1 over 8 times 10 to the minus 2. I'm going to ignore 6. Well, no, I won't. Uh, and that's equal to 0.2 times 0.1 raised to the x. Now this ends up simplifying to 4 equals 2 to the x. Okay. Solving for this x is probably, you know, you probably know what 2 to the 2 has to be raised to to be equal to 4. However, it's not always that nice and clean in lab, and so I want to show you. To pull this down, my engineering people are going, well, yeah, we're going to take the log of both sides. So the log of 4 is equal to the log of 2, and that pulls the x down. To get x by itself, we're going to divide both sides by log of 2. So the log of 4 divided by the log of 2 is equal to x. And when you enter that in your calculator, make sure you are closing your parentheses. Usually your calculator will give you an open-ended parentheses when you do log. But the log of 4 divided by the log of 2 comes out to a nice even 2. And so our x is equal to 2. So, so far, we know that the rate is equal to k a squared. Now let's look for b. Um, for b, I'm going to change my color. Let's do purple. Because we're only looking for b, we want the situation where a is held constant or everything else is held constant and only b is changing. If we had more reactants, we would want only b to change. Here we've got b from trial 1 to 2. b is doubling and our rate is doubling. So here we have our rate of 1.60 times 10 to the minus 1 over 8.00 times 10 to the minus 2 is equal to oops, 0 0.2 over 0 0.1 raised to the y. That gives us 2 is equal to 2 to the y. Again, my mathematical people are probably like, well, yeah, the y must be 1. But if you're not sure, take the log of both sides. Log of 2 is equal to log of 2 times y. Solving, divide both sides by log of 2, and y has to be equal to 1. So our rate constant, or our rate is going to be equal to k times a squared times concentration of B, and we do not write the exponent here. It's an understood one, okay? So here is another example. Please go ahead and like hit pause. Try to see uh, if you can come up with this, if you can do it on your own. The more practice you get, the better. I can only create so many of these, but you get the idea. At this point, I'm going to assume that you know. Again, we have two reactants. So as far as we know, our rate law is equal to K times the concentration of that first reactant to something times the concentration of our second reactant raised to something. So I'm going to look for where A doubles and B is constant. That is going to be trials 1 and 3. Here I go from 8 to 3.2 to the negative 1. So it's a factor of 4. This is a factor of 2, so I know that my rate is equal to Ka squared. In terms of B, B doubles here while A is held constant, so any change in the rate has to be due to the change in B. Oh, but there's no change. So let's go ahead and plug this one in just because we haven't done one like that is equal to um, concentration 2 over concentration 1 raised to the y. 
So this ends up giving us a ratio 8 over 8 to 0 0.2 over 0 0.1 to the y. Solves to give us 1 is equal to 2 to the, I'm sorry, that's a y, 2 to the y. Again, if you don't see this right away, you can take the log of both sides. So log of 1 is equal to log of 2 uh, y. Log of 1 is 0, so 0 is equal to y. So because we don't want to necessarily waste our time by writing in something that doesn't matter, our rate law here would be rate is equal to ka squared. And so our rate law is second order overall and second order with respect to a. If we were to go back for a second, this rate law is 2 plus 1 third order overall, which is kind of rare, but it works. Um, third order overall, second order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. Here's another example where we have our table of data. Go ahead and hit pause. Try to do this on your own. B changes. A is held constant, no change. So even though B doubles, there's no change here. So B has no effect on our rate. A doubles here, B is held constant. Again, there's no change in rate, so there's no change with, with A, so it's just going to be rate is equal to K. So this is a zero order reaction. Here we go. Um, if we look at this one again, same reactants, rate is equal to constant, uh, I'm sorry, K. Concentration of A raised to some exponent. Concentration of B raised to some exponent. Looking for where A doubles, and it's not always going to be first and third trial, it just depends. Um, this is held constant, this doubles. So this doubles, this doubles. It's going to be first order with respect to A. B doubles here while A is held constant. Again, you see a double. So hopefully you can get your rate law is equal to rate is equal to K times A times B. Now, this is a reaction that is first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B, or 1 plus 1 is second order overall. Our exponents are 1 and 1, so second order overall, even though it's only first order with respect to either reactant. So application quiz. Usually I ask a question similar to this on the exam. Um, it's usually in your homework too. I don't remember which, which version I ended up going with. Uh, how do the exponents compare to the coefficient in the balanced equation? Guys, the answer is they don't. There is absolutely no correlation between the coefficients and the balanced equation and what the rate law is. It has no basis. The whole point here is that you have to find your exponents experimentally. Now, The other thing I want to point out is when we look at these, equations, nope, this one, you're given these equations. For me, your, your k is a constant. It is a constant that is specific to a reaction at a given temperature. So I either have to give you all the information and have you solve for K or give you K and have you solve for something else. And so don't get bogged down by the variables and the letters here. Just make sure you're kind of writing out what you've got. And the best example for that is where we're going now into our integrated rate loss. Come on. So rate laws are going to usually be integrated to relate the concentration of reactants to time. Um, they are used to calculate how much reactant is available at a specific time. They're used to calculate your K. They're used to calculate all kinds of things. So for first order, 
we're going to integrate this, it ends up being that the natural log of A is equal to the negative KT plus the natural log of the initial amount of A. Again, the brackets indicate concentration in terms of molarity. Um, by the way, time is usually in seconds. Um, if it changes, just go with whatever unit I give you. As long as the units here and here have the same time factor, you're fine. So here, we can actually apply this integrated rate law to y equals mx plus b. Our x is our change in time. Our y is the natural log of a at some given time. We have a slope of negative k and a y-intercept of a, the natural log of a0. Now, if we have a first order reaction, the graph of natural log of concentration versus time is going to be linear. It is the only graph that will be linear. So if you have a graph in lab that is the most straight when you have natural log versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, it's first order. Now, how are you going to remember that? Well, nope, wrong one, this. In this equation sheet, natural log of A is equal to negative KT plus natural log of A0. I give you this. I give you this natural log e integrated rate law. And so if you look at this, the graph of a first order reaction must be, it, well, the only linear graph of a first order reaction is going to be natural log of A versus time. You can graph other things, but it's not going to be straight. For a second order rate law, it is going to be 1 over the concentration at some given time is equal to kT plus 1 over the concentration initially. Now again, we can apply this to y equals mx plus b. The idea is the change in the concentration at any given time versus time itself is going to give you a nice linear graph. So if you have a second order graph, excuse me, a second order reaction, and you try to graph something like natural log of concentration versus time, it's going to give you a curve. That is not a line. Now you could do a trend line or something, but your R value is going to be something like 0 0.7 or 0 0.8. It's not going to be linear. Um, whereas the only linear graph you'll get for a second order reaction is 1 over concentration versus time. Your Y is going to be 1 over concentration, your X is going to be time, slope is going to be K, and your Y intercept is that 1 over initial concentration. There it goes. For a zero order reaction, the integrated rate law is just concentration versus time. Here we've got the concentration at some given time is equal to negative kT plus the initial concentration. Now what that tells us is when we apply this, y equals mx plus b, our slope is again negative k, our x is t, our y is the concentration at some time. Now this in general if the, the easiest way in your lab data that I think it's part B um, to determine if you have a first, second, or zero order reaction is to graph it. The graph that is most linear with an R squared value that is closest to one is your linear graph. And that is going to permit you to see the order of reaction from experimental data no matter what. Okay? So how do you determine the order of reaction from the graphs? Hit pause, think about it, please. The only answer here is that your linear graph for a zero order reaction is going to be the concentration of A versus time with a slope of K, negative K, sorry. Um, your first order reaction, it's going to the linear graph the only linear graph is the natural log of A versus time. And for a second order reaction, the only linear graph is 1 over the concentration 
versus time. Now guys, I don't even ask you to memorize what slope is because once you know how to use this equation, you can say, well, y equals m, your negative k, negative k, and uh, k, okay? It's already here. You just have to know how to use this sheet to your advantage. There. Here we've got a couple of problems where we are going to work with this. Um, for some reason it's not letting me edit this to put it back to what you guys have. So this should be 1.50 times 10 to the minus 3. And we're going to just assume the units are appropriate. Now, assuming the order of reaction is 0, we know from our equation sheet, and if I leave, for some reason it is not letting me keep my annotations at the moment, so I'm not going to leave. But if you look at your zero order integrated uh, rate law, you have the concentration of A is equal to negative KT plus A0. And so we're given the initial concentration of A, we're given our, our K, and we're given our time. So we have everything here. We can go ahead and plug it in to get negative 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times 50 seconds plus 2.5 molar. Now entering all this in the calculator just this way is going to give us um, plus 2.5 something like 2.425 molar. Uh, in terms of sig figs, you know, I, I would say let's put a period here and make that too. Um, you end up getting something like 2.5 molar, I mean 2.4 molar, okay? For the first order, the integrated rate law is the natural log of A at some given time is equal to negative kT plus the natural log of A0. This is usually the one that people may mess up, this in the second order, because you forget to keep this natural log here. So as we enter this, I'm going to carry this down. The natural log of A is equal to negative 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 times 50 seconds plus the natural log of 2.5. So the natural log of A is equal to natural log of 2.5, um, you end up getting 0 0.8413 or so. Um, this is usually where people are like, oh, well, that's a concentration. No. Make sure you are doing the e to the, you're going to take the second natural log or e to the x of both sides. And when you do that, you end up getting a is equal to 2.32 or about 2.3 molar. Okay. Um, in terms of your second order, your second order equation is 1 over A at some given time is equal to KT plus 1 over the initial concentration of A. So again, this is going to give us 1 over A is equal to uh, I'm sorry, equals 1.50 times 10 to the minus 3 times 50 seconds plus 1 over 2.5. Now, when we do that, uh, you end up getting something like 0 0.475 but remember this is 1 over A. So in order to do uh, your A, you need to take the reciprocal of both sides or 1 over this and you end up getting 2.105 or 2.11, 2.1 molar. Okay. So make sure as you are doing this you are following your units, you're going from the left to the right, you're not just ending too soon.
So one way to do this was to find uh, your concentration at a given time. Um, another is to look for the value of k. Again, this uses the integrated rate law because we don't have rate here. So we're going to go with this. Now 45% complete 52 minutes. Hmm. 45% complete. That doesn't give us a molarity. But we can talk about it in terms of fractions. And so if we had 1.0 or 100% to begin with, at time 52 minutes, we would have 45% complete means we're left with 55% or 0.55. Okay. 45% um, is reacted, the rest is left. And so we're going to do it this way. Now for our zero order reaction, we know that our integrated rate law is AT is equal to negative KT plus A0. Again, we have our concentration of A, we have our concentration of A0. Um, we are going to just plug in and solve for our K. So here we have 0 0.55 molar is equal to negative K times 52 minutes plus 1.0. Easiest thing here to do is to go ahead and get rid of this one. We're going to subtract one from both sides. That gives us negative 0.45 is equal to negative k times 52. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 52. Negative 52, I'm sorry, negative 52. Negative and 52 cancel. Here the negative cancels. So you end up with 0.45 divided by uh, 52. And our k value for the zero order reaction is 8.7 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, in terms of this molarity over time, it's just going to be molarity over minutes. That makes sense. If we're going to do first order, first order integrated rate law, according to our equation sheet, is the natural log of A is equal to negative kt plus the natural log of a0. So we can go ahead and say the natural log of at, which we know to be 0 0.55, is equal to negative k times 52 minutes uh, plus the natural log <laughs> of um, uh, 1.0. There we go. So just plugging in what we know, the natural log of 0.55 is going to be negative 0 0.5978. Guys, I know that it's really, you want to round to sig figs early. Don't do that, especially with the way mom works. Carry the reaction out and, I mean, carry the calculation out and then round at the end. Um, the absolute tolerance that I can program is something like, usually it's 1 or 2%. And so you're probably going to be fine if you round, but let's just make sure. It doesn't take that long to, uh, you know, check. So this is equal to negative K times 52 minutes plus zero. Natural log of one is zero. Uh, get rid of our negatives, um, and we're going to divide both sides by 52. So this goes away, and we are left with negative, uh, I'm sorry, 0.5978 divided by 52. I kept my negative earlier. Um, and so our k here is equal to 0 0.0115. Um, and we're again in uh, units of 1 over minutes. And that's it. Yay. 
Okay, so now let's do our second order. I'm going to erase this and do it up here in green. So for green, our second order reaction, second order integrated rate law is 1 over AT is equal to KT plus 1 over A0. Don't get lazy. Like I'm, I'm really struggling to remember to write these brackets. Make sure you have them so that you know for sure that you're talking about molarity here. So again, we know everything but our K, so we're going to plug in 1 over 0 0.55 is equal to K times 52 minutes plus 1 over 1 1.0. Is that right? A0, AT. Okay. So here we have 1 divided by 0.55. Um, this ends up being, I kind of like working in decimals better, so it's up to you whether you do this. 1.8181 is equal to 52k plus 1. Oops. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 0 0.8181 is equal to 52k. Getting this lowercase k by itself, we're going to divide both sides by, itself, by 52. Lowercase k is equal to 0.8181 divided by 52 or 0 0.0157. In terms of our units, we know that it is over minutes. In order to cancel, we also have molarity per minute. Okay? So that's one set of equations we can do. The other is uh, the time required for a reactant to reach the half-life or to find the amount of half-lives that are necessary, that kind of thing. When we talk about half-life, half-life is just the time required for a reactant to reach half of its original concentration. Okay. Now, we can use those integrated rate laws and solve for... solve for that because we can plug in, you know, 1.0.5, 1 uh, 1.0.5. Um, it ends up being it doesn't really matter because when you solve this it ends up giving you a, a ratio. It just is easier to usually come up with the second, this set of equations. So a first order reaction, the half-life does not depend on the concentration. T1 half is equal to 0.693 over K. This is actually the natural log of 2 over K. Uh, concentration has gone down by a factor of 2, so ln of 2 over K. Half-life here, um, for second order, it ends up being 1 over K and 1 over the initial concentration. What this really tells us is that the half-life is going to get longer as the reaction progresses. As this goes down, it's a... a inverse relationship here. So as A goes down, T goes up. So every half-life is going to double or be longer than the first. For your zero order half-life, this is going to be the concentration of A0 over 2K. Uh, this is just a rearrangement of that integrated rate law, but here we've got uh, as the concentration of A goes down, so does our half-life. So here, half-lifes get shorter as the reaction progresses. So consider the reaction. The half-life ha uh, is 1.2 hours. If the reaction began with 5.0 molar, what is the value of K? Well, here we've got our half-life equations. Let me go into this. You can kind of see I've got your half-life. If you decide you don't want to, you can always plug it into your integrated, but this is definitely the shorter way, okay? So let's go into our problem set. Come on. There it goes. So for zero order, I'm going to do it up here this time. 
our half-life is T1 half is equal to the initial concentration of A over 2K. So we can go ahead and plug in. Our half-life is 1.2 hours. Initially started with 5.0 molar over 2K. Depends on how you learned math. If you like to cross multiply, just multiply across. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2K. That gives us 2.4K is equal to 5.0 molar. And this is hours here. Now, in order to get k by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2.4 hours. And so you end up getting 5.0 divided by 2.4, or k is equal to 2.08, 2.1 molarity, uh, 2.1 molarity per hour. Okay, now for our first order reaction, if our, we have our T1 half for a first, that is going to be equal to 0 0.693, oops, 693 over K. So we can go ahead and plug in 1.2 hours is equal to 0 0.693 over K, 1.2 K is equal to 0 0.693. K is equal to 0 0.693 over 1.2. Check my math, and that looks good. It ends up being 0 0.5775 or 0 0.58, um, one over hours. For our second order reaction, the half-life here is equal to 1 over K times the initial concentration of A. So we've got 1.2 hours, and that's equal to 1 over K times 5.0 molar. That is actually too hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and change color. Let's go with this. There we go. So we're going to multiply both sides by k and 5. So 1.2 times 5 is 6.0. 6.0. Now this, guys, is going to be hours, and this is molarity. So hours and molarity times k is equal to 1. Get k by itself. We divide both sides by 6.0 hours per hours and molarity. And 1 divided by 6, your k, lowercase k, is equal to 0 0.171 1 per molarity time. So consider the reaction. Guys, so let me just point this out really quick. By doing the, the last couple slides, this is three potential problems right here. We just did it for, you know, on the exam, I'm going to specify for a first order, for a second order, or, um, you know, something along those lines. It, but this is potentially three problems that we just did. Last thing, we, we've looked at calculating your AT. Now we can actually calculate our half-life knowing that we're beginning with some concentration and the rate constant is here. Now, looking at that, this is just a simple plug and chug. Again, you have to know the, the equation, but as long as you're looking at the right one, you're okay. So for the zero order, T1 half is equal to A0 over 2K. Here we've got 6.7 molar divided by 2 and 0 0.820. Usually I'm going to give you the units. Um, here we're just going to pretend it's seconds, just like always. Um, 
you know, uh, just like usual. I should say, should say just like usual. I threw in the examples in this, the PowerPoint of minutes and hours just to show you that time can vary. But anyway, so your T1 half for the zero order reaction is 6.7 divided by 2 and divided by 0.82. And you end up getting 4.08. Uh, molar over seconds. Zero order, actually this is molar per second, so it's just one over seconds. Okay, so for our first order reaction, our T1 half here is equal to 0 0.693 divided by K here, our K only has the units of 1 over seconds. Molarity is just, uh, it's not there. So our T1 half is equal to 0 0.693 divided by 0 0.820 seconds. Uh, entering that in the calculator, your T1 half here is 0 0.845. This one over seconds should be seconds. There we go. One over, one over seconds. It should be seconds here. T here, um, same thing. It's one over seconds. So one over, one over seconds gives us seconds. Very fast reaction, that one. Um, for our second order reaction, our T1 half is equal to 1 over K times A0. For this, our K is going to have the units uh, molarity per second because it, that's what it is according to the rate law. So to calculate this, we enter 1 over 0 0.820 molar seconds times our initial concentration of A, which is 6.7. So here we've got 1 divided by 0.82 and, and 6.7. And you end up getting something like 0 0.182, uh, 1 per the, the seconds cancel. This is molar, molar cancels. 1 over 1 over time gives us seconds. That looks like what I have, although I've got to work on my handwriting. This is um, it for the rate law <laughs> lecture. Um, it's a lot of math, but it's also a lot of fun. So as you work through these, just kind of be aware. I have a lot of supplemental homework. I can always put in more practice if you need it. Uh, just follow your units and get make sure you're comfortable using your equation sheet.